many manuscript scholars often sit on their findings, this is really disturbing, for many, many years before the public ever gets to see their translations. It's, it's horrible. What are they afraid of? I think most of it has to do with securing publishing rights, more grant money, and selling books. I think this is just a, a, a method of getting more, <laughs> getting more, because this is their livelihood. And that's why God asks in Isaiah 28, 9, to whom will he, that is Christ, announce or declare, right, his tidings, his good tidings, right? His, his message, or throw out as instruction and couple to this, to whom will he make it to be discerned or understood? Who's he going to do this? Understand what? The announced message. Where Angelus. So this is where we get euangelos, which is evangelist. So these words are being borrowed from the Old Testament. And, and used again, reused, in a different way in the New Testament. We see this. The New Covenant brings light. Certainly not these prophets and priests, these deceiving prophets and priests, right? These deceiving, they're deceiving. They're, they're doing it for money. And these drunk priests who were still so immature from God's viewpoint, just weaned from milk, drawn from the breasts. That's verse uh, 28, 9. Certainly not to these teachers who God mimics with Hebrew baby song, right? These scribes for their study teaching approach, using gibberish baby song, precept upon precept, line upon line, rule upon rule, here or there, a little there, a little there. The Net Bible says the repetitive symbols uh, are of indeed a little there, a little here, or command after command, command after command. That's, that's the Bible, right? Are gibberish that resembles baby talk, which fits the context perfectly. No kidding. That was their method of study, studying the scripture, to understand God's will. To understand God and his will, really. Right? As a series of precepts, regulations, ordinances of the law. That's what that is. Precepts, regulations, ordinances of the law taught by humans. By rote, a very slow, difficult, tedious process with comparatively childlike results. It is tedious, man. I spent so many hours doing this stuff, trying to save you time from doing it. I mean... I can't believe I spent all this time, at some point, I did all this. I can't remember how long ago it was. But I was pulling on that thread, and I couldn't stop pulling on this thread. It's all about context. Isaiah 28, 1-9 is a chastisement and a warning by God to Ephraim, directed to the false teachers and prophets, through the prophet Isaiah, about their drunkenness. Right? And to stop corrupting the spoken word of God through the addition or replacement of these written prophecies by their actual prophecies, right? With, right? Written prophecies of actual ordained, God ordained, you know, He ordained prophets, which they all killed, right? Right? They killed all the prophets. And now Jesus was the last prophet. So this is this is not good. They killed Isaiah. 
eventually, which they all killed with, which they all killed with words, and they replacing them, right? Addition or replacement of these written prophecies of actual God ordained prophets who were all killed. Right? You know that. Jesus talks about you killed them all, and it's true. They killed them all. And they are replaced with words from false prophets and teachers. Just great. Just great. They replace with false prophets and these drunken teachers. Man. What about who embraced idolatry? They were embracing idolatry, thereby contaminating, contaminating the truth in Grafe's scripture about the God whom they were committed and commanded, they were commanded to worship, right? What these false prophets and teachers, I'm trying to get this cleaned up for you as we go, being like, like a little child, we're not doing things perfect. Who does anything perfect, right? Thank you for your patience. Add with their own oral traditions, right? What these false prophets and teachers add with their oral traditions, right, is childish gibberish. Why? Because the written words, and you can see the oral traditions, um, like the Mishnah, they're commentaries, right? They wrote commentaries is childish gibberish, commentaries, expository commentaries. That's what it was, expository commentaries. You should read them. Just commentaries on the scripture is, is childish gibberish. Why? Because the written words are for little children. And now they are adding more to it. What they should be doing right now is listening to their true prophets. But they go back to writings. The Message Bible says, we're not babies in diapers to be talked down to by such as you. Da, 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 blah, 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 blah. That's a good little girl. That's a good little boy. See how far some of the message Bible goes way off, way off. Blah, 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 da, da. But that part's right. It's gibberish. But that's a good little girl. That's a good little boy. No, that's, that's not even in the text. Okay. The net Bible is accurate on its translation. The present translation Quote, assumes that the neg repetitive symbols are gibberish. Right? It's translation notes. And it says right here, the present line translation assumes that the repetitive symbols are gibberish that resembles baby talk and mimics what the people will hear when foreign invaders conquer the land. Yeah, God even ties it into that. But we will... But we will see this also is about the Spirit's ministry of tongues for the completely different in kind new covenant to come, right? In this case, the Hebrew zir for a little refers to the short syllabic structure of the babbling. That's what they say. Compare the CEV Bible that says senseless sound after senseless sound, or the revised English Bible, and which is right, see page 10, da 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 da. So there's a lot of scholarly work on this. And the expanded Bible, wow, this is really long. The expanded Bible makes a note. It may be the people, it may be the people mocking the words of the prophet. At, it may be referring to the pe people mocking the words of the prophets as nonsense.
But it's actually God, that's what they say. But it, you look at it carefully, it's actually God mocking the teachers. The TLB Bible, these are all Bible versions, by the way. They're just the expanded Bible, the living Bible. You know, you got to know the, these abbreviations that Bible Gateway uses. He tells us everything over and over again, a line at a time, and in such simple words. Well, again, that's wrong. That's, that's, you got to follow the pronouns. The NOG Bible says, they speak utter nonsense. Yeah, it's they. Well, who's they? Jill's, Gill's expository note says, signifying that they must be dealt with as children were. Now, that's getting closer. When first instructed in the rudiments of a language, there we go, the rudimental fundamentals, the ABCs, first had one rule given them and then another, this is how you treat little children, and so one after another till they had gone through the whole. This is exactly the New Testament's argument about the Jewish people needing childlike hand-holding Pedagogist, that's rote, pedagogist or padio uh, training. Padio training is child training. That's what it is, where we get podiatry. And pedagogist is a uh, child hand holding that a servant does, right? A, a, a servant, a household manager, right, uh, does. The Bible uses all these things to explain this. Uh, of the elementary fundamental ABC fundamentals, right, the Stokian, of the grammar writings of Graphite Scripture, and I give you a lot of verses, that was baby's milk. But that the solid food, in contrast to this, that the solid food was discernment by the Holy Spirit. So you want to go look at what we talked about earlier, Block Talk 16. Matthew Henry notes, those that teach are drunk with wine. Yep, that's right, that's right. Are intoxicated with false doctrines and notions. Barnes notes, there is a constant repetition of the command without ornament, imagery, or illustration. With, it's just it's just there's nothing to it just over and over and over without an appeal to our understanding or respect for our reason it is simply one mandate after another just as lessons are inculcated upon children yes that's correct Kyle and Dial each notes the short words are intended to throw ridicule upon the smallness and vexatious character of the prophets interminable and interrupted chinings, right? But they got it wrong. They got it wrong. They, they are, they're saying it's about Isaiah. Well, maybe, maybe it's kind of funny. They were saying this about Isaiah, but God actually is mocking these teachers. Right? They're actually mocking these teachers using that gibberish. So it's possible it's both, both and. Sometimes it's not one or the other. It's like, oh, they're saying this about Isaiah, but I couldn't really, you know, it, you got to follow the pronouns. What amazes me is how many scholars get some of the details correct, but they don't have the discernment of the Holy Spirit. Don't, and they don't read carefully in the Isaiah 28 context, so then they, they get the details wrong. They miss the forest through the trees. And they don't see how net the New Testament uses these passages. The New Testament is the substance reality of the Old Testament shadows and copies. You must always interpret backwards for the greater light of the New Testament. So that's how I, I know. I got the sermon. I went back from the New Testament, and you can see very clearly, the promised gift will certainly not, uh, the promised Christ will certainly not ongoingly teach his people this way 
of the teachers of Christ's day, right, that this prophesies, right? He's not going to teach his people this way as did the teachers of Christ's day, right? That this, that Isaiah 28 speaks of. So, you got to look backwards. We know his way is supernatural because in 1 Corinthians 14, 21, Paul cites Isaiah 20, 11, right? How, this is how you know the proper use in reference to the Holy Spirit's supernatural grace gifts of tongues as a sign to these unbelieving Jewish prophets and priests, right? Saying, for by... People of strange gibberish, there it is, glossa, tongues or languages, and coupled with foreign or different lips. There's their foreigners. Remember, there's people from all countries that came in. Uh, all these different places came to Pentecost. Foreign, different lips. Yahweh will speak to these people, the Israelites, saying, This is rest to the weary. This is repose. And Jesus says he will give rest to the weary. I mean, he uses almost the same words. But they still refused to listen. There's that word. They refused to listen. Again, the problem isn't teachers reading, but not listening to those who were speaking. See, they were good readers and studiers, right? That wasn't the problem. They were not listening to who were speaking, Jesus and his disciples. In the context of 1 Corinthians chapters 12 and 14, these gibberish tongues or languages are the supernatural glossa tongues of men and angels that on the day of Pentecost in Acts 2, 5 through 6, there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men from every nation, right, under heaven, right, with all their foreign tongues, at this sound of the Holy Spirit rushing into the disciples, the multitude came together, and they were bewildered, because each one was hearing them speak in his own language. Right? The tongue of foreigners. This is the sound of the Holy Spirit, right? This people of strange gibberish gloss of tongues, and coupled with foreign different lips of 1 Corinthians 14.21, is citing Isaiah 20.11. It's for the entire church age what the Holy Spirit gives Christians uh, for prayer, singing, and even communication within church services. When it is also, how does it communicate during church services? When it is also interpreted by the Holy Spirit. So there's a lot of uses for this, the, this tongue, this gibberishness that they're going to hear that God decides to give the church, right? So God is speaking by his spirit to the Pharisees and scribes who will, shall see, we shall see, are mocking these prophets. They're mocking the prophets. See, this is all... Uh, they're mo mocking these prophets in Isaiah. They're mocking uh, God's prophets in Pentecost. But God mocks them all, right, saying their rote way of learning about God by the grammar letters is actually gibberish. I learned Greek that way by rote, saying the words over and over and over. So this is how they teach you in Bible college. Ironically, these strange... Gloss of tongues they mocked, right, in Pentecost, were the actual Logos message of Yahweh. That's what Isaiah says. Even though they come in the form of and will sound to the unbelieving prophets and priests, just as gibberish and baby-like, just as the way, right, see, this is just as the way God views their own precept upon precept here a little here, there a little, teaching of the Grafe scripture. See, God's throwing their words right back in their face. That's exactly what happened starting on the day of Pentecost in Acts 2, 1 through 21. When 120 disciples were filled by the means of the Holy Spirit, 
couple began to speak in other of a different class, gloss of tongues, as the Spirit gave them utterance. Many devout people from every nation, there it is, under heaven, were astonished. There's their foreigners, were astonished because each one of them, hearing them, all speak in his own language. And they were amazed and astonished because we hear them telling in our own dialectus, where we get dialect, languages and tongues, the mighty works of God, and all were amazed and perplexed. Wow! 120 Christians heard, right, by people from every nation under heaven. That's supernatural. Yet others mockingly said, because they obviously didn't understand a word, they were, they, they were mockingly said, they are all filled with new wine, like stammering, gibberish, speaking drunks. That's what New wine. This is this is a, a, a kind of wine that is highly intoxicating. It's a special word. Uh, making them speak like stammerish, gibberish, uh, speaking drugs. But Peter had to correct them, right? Peter had to correct them. He says, no, that's not right. Just like Isaiah had to correct them. Peter had to correct them. These people are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only 8 to 9 a.m., which is the third hour. And then he cites Joel 2, 28, 29, completely different in kind, new covenant prophecy. I will pour out my spirit your sons and daughters shall actually prophesy in vision, visions, dream, dreams. And to summarize, this is the last thing he says, On my servants I will pour out my spirit, and they shall actually prophesy. What they heard in strange tongues that appeared as gibberish to the mocking Pharisees and scribes was actually Isaiah 28.11 and Joel 2.28.29 prophecy, which is always the directly spoken Rhema words of God that now, now we're being promised, right? Now we're being promised. And that's what it says. Now we're being promised. That's what it says. That is the promise for all of God's servants throughout the last days or church age. And that's what it says. Paul, you know, Peter says. This is for you and your children, all those who are far off, even to the end of the ages. And it just started right then. So Isaiah 28 is what happened. We know from the context of Acts, these others who were mocking were the unbelieving Jews, many of which were the false prophets and teachers, right, who were the fair, right, of Isaiah. That's like of Isaiah 28 who were the Pharisees, Sadducees, and scribe teachers of Christ's day that Jesus constantly argued against. Isaiah 28, 13 says that these Jewish teacher leaders may walk a bit forward in their knowledge of God's will from the Grafe scripture. They make a little progress. But they soon fall backwards. But finally, on their backs, right, they finally, finally fall back words to their injury described in verse 28 6 as the reeling of a drunk because their study tables are filthy with vomit from 28 8 unaware that they have been lured into a trap and finally captured that's verse 13 the luring the learning table of the jewish teachers and scribes right surely lured them in with potential knowledge of and forward progress, right, toward God. But then they soon fall backwards into the clenches of the snare and are crushed to death. The wise and learned were fooled. This will not stop the Messiah from doing Yahweh's deed. And strange it is, his work is alien. His work is alien. Wow. It seems so strange in verse 21 to so many religious people. 
so used to study. To understand the different ways to know God, see the knowledge page. That's a fantastic page. I did a complete study of how to know God in, throughout. Right? So, wow. So my reflection is here. As Christians and musicians, are we also to stumble over prophecy and tongues and be snared and trapped by the gibberish idea of learning about God? It's gibberish through grammar writings of grammar scripture, one line upon line, one precept upon precept. See, God mocks them. Then God will mock us also and pay us back with bent backs forever. So that's something we're going to see coming up here. Bent backs forever. That's their payback for being so unwilling to listen to the prophets, the true prophets of God, unwilling to listen to Jesus. We cannot go back to the way of the false prophets who prophesy from their mind and the false teachers who don't actually know God, even though they know all about God through their Bible. That's what, that's what happens. This is all Old Covenant way that has been replaced by the completely different in kind New Covenant way of prophecy by the means of the Holy Spirit. That's what happened on in Acts chapter 2. That's prophecy. That's what Peter said. Jesus said, My sheep hear my voice, not read about me from writings of men, only some of which were collected over hundreds of years. We must graduate from this childlike gibberish rote learning. That's what it is. Childlike gibberish rote learning. That's exactly what the New Testament says over and over and over, right? My prayer is, Lord, help us move past the gibberish milk of the grandma writings of Grafe Scripture, even New Testament writings. Let us embrace the promise you came to replace it all, the Holy Spirit being our one teacher, one teacher, so that we have absolutely, in fact, no need that any man teach us. See, no writings, no need for teachers. You see why? Because you have the anointing that teaches you all things. And who said that? Oh, this is a trick question. I've only said it about a hundred times, maybe. 1 John 2, 20 and 27. Well, I can't wait to hear what you guys have to say about this long blog. Sorry about that. Very long blog. Maybe I'll break it into two parts. Just to save you, save you some trouble here. God bless you. Look forward to your comments below. And we'll, there's much more in the next blogs really going into this deeper. Okay? God bless you. All right. Bye-bye.